Hey everybody, this is Hooks and Ladders, where we talk about songwriting. My name is Blair Packham. And my name is Alistair Bradley. And we have a guest. And my name is Ron Sexman. <laughs> Indeed it is. We're so glad you're here. It's really great that you're here. We want to pick your brain a little bit about songwriting. All and right. uh, we want to ask you a specific question. You've, you've released many records at this point. How many albums at this point? Well, I think the one that um, I've just been working on uh, will be my 17th when it, if it, you know, if it ever comes out. Um, there, there were a few records like the one called Rarities, which probably wasn't a proper album, but, you know, but, but, but yeah, there's, there's been 17 or there will be 17 releases. That's amazing. And, 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 and I, I love your songwriting so much. So I'm excited about the new one, but that's a lot of songs. So that for me begs the question, our question today, which is how do you try to, how do you avoid repeating yourself as a songwriter? Well, I guess I don't even really, um, I don't really try to avoid it in a way, you know. Um, I just find there's a lot of things that happen naturally that uh, you're just always in a different space, you know, different headspace or different point in your life or, um, or you know, whatever's going on in, in your head or in your emotional life. And, um, and I just try to stay open to it. You know, I, I write a lot when I'm when I'm walking around and I just find myself with these uh, ideas. Sometimes they're lyrical, sometimes they're musical. And but I'm not I'm never thinking, well, how can I do something different? Or, you know, I'm just there's a certain thing I do. Right. It's sort of a melodic form of songwriting that's based on all these heroes of mine that I grew up listening to. And so I think over time I've gotten a lot more comfortable uh, with it, and I, I I can recognize when I'm in the zone, you know, when I oh, when I can tell an album is taking shape, and um, and I think if you look back on, on each album, they're all lyrically coming from a different place, but not because I tried to do that, it just because of what was going on. So, um, so I don't, I guess I I don't really worry about it. Um, you know, it's like a Lightfoot record. You know, he's made so many albums. And yeah. has he has his music changed? Not really that much, you know. I mean, it, it's Gord, you're in the Gord Lightfoot zone when he put on one of his records. His voice changed and the production changes and stuff like that. But there's a certain thing when you're a fan of his that you're you're hoping for. You want to hear his his point of view or what's going on in his life. And um so uh you know, there's songs like uh, Secret Heart from my first album. I don't think I could write that song now because it was coming from such an innocent place in a way, and it was so um, simple. Um, I probably would mess it up now by getting too fancy or something, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, it's just like you kind of have to look in the mirror and go, okay, this is who, what I look like now. This is what's going on. And and be kind of relevant to your yourself at wh whatever point, you know, you're at. Um, so, yeah, so I just, I'd write, I try not to think about it too much or analyze it because I know, I just know naturally it's going to be something that I haven't written before, even though obviously there's a thread that runs through all my albums of, of what my DNA is or what, yeah. you know, what I stand for or whatever. So, so yeah, I, th I think you can really go down a rabbit hole if, if you're chasing that. I know it's a lot of artists do like how I want to do something that no one's ever heard before. And that's great. I'm not one of those guys like, yeah, you know, the right. artists like, like Bowie and Kate Bush and they're, you know, they, they're always recreating, reinventing uh, that. I'm more of a, again, coming from the, that Lightfoot tradition. Right. You know, right. I mean, you, you, you know, you read about McCartney saying, you know, we heard uh, pet sounds and, you know, or, or uh, you know, with Helter Skelter wanted to make it the like bigger and louder than the who, you know, and yeah. uh, um, but but you're not that guy. You're not reacting to stuff you're hearing uh, uh, out there in the world so much. Yeah, because I, I know, too, the, the songs, the songwriting is just a part of it because, you know, I'm working with different producers and different musicians. And every album is going to take on a life of its own. And because I want my albums to be different, uh, you know, uh, I want to 
what we we did one album that was done in london and some of it was done in cuba with all these horns and uh other records that were more kind of um sparse and some that had everything in the kit you know the kitchen sink was thrown in all these like this new album for example has got strings and woodwinds and harpsichords and oh, and wow. um so and whereas the last time i played everything myself you know and it was very sort of kid in a candy store type of thing yeah so so yeah there's a lot going on there's the songs and then what happens to the songs after right so when when you're writing the song and you've got your guitar in your hand you're still feeling wide open to well when we get in the studio maybe it'll be in a different key or at a different tempo or at a different vibe is that is that what you're saying yeah um and that's and that's something too that i try to be flexible about you know with every producer um you know you can you can hold on too tightly to the things and and uh but like it, with Mitchell Froon, who did my first three records, there was a lot of that. I'd come in with a ballad and he would say, well, I hear this one more as more of a rocker. And I and I was intrigued, you know, and I was like, OK, well, let, let's see what happens. Um, and and that's a good thing. Um, I had a song called Dragonfly in Bay Street uh, uh, again, which was written kind of like a folk pop song, which on the record it turned into a kind of disco number, you know, the sort of club clubby kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, you have to be open to that. I mean, I, uh, to a point, right? Like I don't want, you know, I, I, oftentimes the song sort of has to go this way or, or, but, 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 you know, uh, most of the songs kind of tell you what they, what they need or what needs to happen just in, in you know, in an instinctive way. So, when you again, when you pick up the guitar, I guess if a lot of the song comes to you while you're away from your instrument, you're yeah, for yeah. a walk, you're imagining this, you know, the what's the story of this, and and even you, to, you say to some degree, what's the melody of this? Yeah. Then you yeah. pick up your guitar. You know, do your hands when you pick up your guitar tend to go to the same place? Right. Well, I, I write. I, do you ever try to uh, mm -hmm. mix it up? Oh yeah, I mean. That's kind of the fun part, you know, when I when I'm in, a, in the middle of a bunch of songs, because I do write a lot on piano, actually, more than more than guitar, probably probably because I, I know the guitar relatively well, um, whereas piano, I'm still finding my way and I'll stumble on, on the things that wouldn't might not occur to me on the guitar. Um, and but before anyone hears the songs, I'll oftentimes I'll try them on the guitar, I'll try them on the piano, I'll try them in different keys. I, I'm always tweaking the structure of the song. Um, before I demo, the, before I record an album, I usually demo the songs at least three or four times. Wow. Uh, because, yeah, because every time you demo the songs, or at least every time I like, I'll do a garage band demo, and then with this record, I went to Jim Bryson's studio near Ottawa, demo yeah. the song. And then most recently, I I had written a couple, you know, in the interim, a couple of newer ones. So I, I and also I tweaked the ones, because that's kind of how you can tell where the problems are. You listen to the demos, and you're like, well, this key is wrong, or oh, I should uh, I should get to the bridge faster, or or whatever it is. You you really only hear it when, when you know I walk around with with my disc man, you know, listening to the demos, and and it, you know, so. Um, by the time I demoed these songs for the third time, they were pretty airtight, you know, like they, they yeah. structurally, but even still, once I got down to Nashville, producer Brad Jones had all these other ideas for things that uh, hadn't occurred to me. And, and all his ideas were great. At, at a certain point, I just gave up because I just thought, well, your ideas are way better than, than mine, you know? <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so, so things keep evolving. And even once I get out on the road, I might find a, Oh, I wish I would have sang this line like the way I'm singing it now, and you know, on the road. But um, ultimately, or at some point, you you have to just make peace with it. That the uh, you know the the songs have gone through this sort of rigorous process, you know, where where you feel like you could. I, I've this has always been important to me is that whatever happens with the production, that I want every song to be something that I can just play you on the guitar or the piano, and it sounds like a song. And I, I realize it's not what everybody does because because some people's songs are they they revolve around the bass line or the whatever it is you know yeah but I'm very old school that way you know I'm always thinking of the the Johnny Mercers and and people like that and I 
I've tried to, yeah, I'm a bit of a purist that way, I suppose. Yeah. You're, you're in the room with two other uh, like-minded songwriters, because I think Blair <laughs> and I both approach it the same way, we, that, that we'll feel the song is ready when we can do it, just vocal and guitar, and, and it, it all hangs together. Yeah, yeah, or even sing it in the air. Yeah, or even yeah. sing it in the air. Yeah. But when you, say you go into the, when you say you go into the studio and, and yeah, yeah. do three demos, you're not wildly changing things. You're, you're just zeroing in, right? It's just zeroing in. Um, yeah. You know, oftentimes it's a matter of key or tempo. Or, or maybe, um, you know, the first demo I did for this album was all on the piano. And then, this, you know, the, next, the other two were guitar. Um, you know, so it, it, but yeah, it changes in, in a way that maybe other people might not even notice, but right. it just becomes a little more solid. I'll have maybe there'll be an intro to a song that I didn't have before, and all of a sudden there's an intro, you know, yeah. or, or sometimes you realize, oh, I bet this would be nice if it start if it started with the bridge melody, so that when the bridge comes in later on, they'll, they'll see there's, there's a mind at work or something, you know, there's some kind of continuity <laughs> there. If it's um, a plan. Yeah. So well, all that. But again, I'm not good at and I'm not be, you know, I'm not being monitored, you know, but I'm really not very good at anything else. So for me, it's this one thing that I'm so obsessed with that I feel, uh, you know, I'm not I don't want to go on and make a record with uh, if there's any thing that's sort of half half baked. You know, I, I want it to be all the songs to be pretty well thought out. And because sometimes I'll hear in, in another songwriter's work, I'll be like, I'll be like, really, you're going to leave it there? You know, like I'll, I'm pretty critical, you know, of my own stuff too, but I'll hear other people sometimes and I'll like, yeah, oh, that was going so well with that first verse. And then the second verse didn't sing as well as the first verse or you know, just things like that. And whereas all my favorite songwriters, you kind of marvel at how they were able, like whoever it is, like Randy Newman or, you know, how they were able to write these songs and, Again, that's a sort of airtight thing, lyrically, melodically, uh, how they play their instrument. It's just this thing, singular thing that you can't, you know, get from anyone else. And that's, I've always been drawn to those people, those types. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this, um, uh, your insights in, into songwriting. I know that, you know, you're focusing on your own songwriting because you, you know, you, you, you know, don't claim to be a songwriting teacher or anything like that. But I really think your insights into your own songwriting are very valuable to other people. And I, I appreciate so much you giving your time to talk about thank it. Thank you. Yeah. And let me know if I'm going overboard with the long windedness of it. Or whatever no, it's all good. It's all okay. good. Yeah. Okay.